with Barbara Walters. I drank, I smoked, I did drugs, I had sex with people. I did anything I could to get the shame out of my life. Anne H., the fragile and beautiful actress who fell in love with Ellen DeGeneres. And you wrote in your book, it was the best sex you ever had. Best sex I've ever had. Better than with any man? Anne H., married to this man just last weekend. A complicated woman. Anne, are you crazy? I believed I was from another planet. I think I was insane. Kids. So demanding, so exhausting. She didn't give me no Uh-uh, uh -huh. no curse words. Dumbass. Come on, bus. Some parents can't wait to get to work. So that's your place to run from your children, really. Yeah, yeah. The Great Escape. The safety police are at it again. And now they're moving to outlaw these. Too much of a distraction, they say. Maybe we should outlaw walking and chewing gum. I'm John Stossel, and I say, give me a break. 2020 begins in 60 seconds. And now, from Times Square in New York, Barbara Walters. Good evening. Welcome to the first night of 2020 on Wednesday. Tonight, a Hollywood star who says she was insane for 31 years and no one knew. Her name is Anne H. And you may recognize her from TV or movies, but you probably know her best for her very public love affair with Ellen DeGeneres. This past Saturday, Anne H. made news again when she married a man named Coleman Lafoon. But Anne's romances are just a part of the incredible story she tells you. And you will learn why, in all seriousness, Anne H. titles her just-published autobiography, Call Me Crazy. Call Me Crazy by me. As Anne H. records her book on tape, an extraordinary story unfolds of abuse, tragedy, and insanity. I stood at the top of the staircase. My breath was silent as I inhaled, closed my eyes, held out my arms, and leapt. Anne, are you crazy? I'm not crazy now. I lived a crazy life. I was raised in a crazy family, and it took me 31 years to get the crazy out of me. You wrote in your book that you were insane. Those are your words. Mm -hmm. Insane for 31 years. You're 32 now. I had another personality. I had a fantasy world that I escaped to. I called my other personality Celestia. I called the other world that I created for myself the fourth dimension. I believed I was from that world. I believed I was from another planet. I think I was insane. We had just begun our interview, the first time Anne has talked about her life when she was overcome with emotion. Take your time. All right. You want some water? Can we start with your childhood? Yep. We'll do it together. Okay. Let me show you a picture. Sure. This is a family picture. It's a lovely picture. All of these smiling, attractive people. Yeah. Right? Yeah. On the surface, the H family was the epitome of the perfect American family. Deeply religious, four blonde-haired, blue-eyed children, a smiling mother, and a father in charge of the church choir. When you look at this, what do you see? A bunch of lies. That family is a lying family. The image was far from the reality. Don H., the choir director, was, according to Anne, an abusive father, chronically unemployed and leading a bizarre double life. At that time, my father had AIDS. We were uh, almost homeless. About a month before we became homeless, we took that picture. We were a disaster. How can a mother not know that her child, her young baby girl, is being raped by her husband? How can a mother not know? When does a mother break the rules? 
any abuse is horrifying, but this was something very different. You talk about it in your book. Can you talk about it now? Sure. I, I can tell you what I know. Okay. I believe I was sexually abused by my father from the time I was a very young girl, actually before I could speak, up until the time I was 12. How did he abuse you? In my memory, yes. he raped me. He stuck his d in my mouth. He fondled me. He put me on all fours and had sex with me. When you were a toddler? In my memory, yes. My father would always undress in front of me, beckon me to bed as if I was his lover. I remember entering the bed with him many times. Did your mother know? I can't say whether or not my mother knew. Um, you never told her? I did not tell her until I was in my 20s. I had herpes from the time I was a very young girl. Because he was entering your mouth? Yes. That's my belief. I remember being six years old and saying, Mommy, what's on my face? You had a rash. I had sores. I had welts on my nose and on my lips. When you talk about your father abusing you, you say, in my memory, does that mean that there's a possibility that it didn't happen? I think it's always hard for children to talk about abuse because it is only memory. But I didn't carry around a tape recorder. I didn't chisel anything in stone. And I think that's part of why people don't talk about abuse, because anybody can look and say, well, how do you know for sure? And it's one of the most painful things about it. You don't. There's a place for us, a time and place for us. Somehow, someday, somewhere. When you were 10, and your father had no money, and you were kicked out of the final home, because there were many homes that uh, your family lived in. Right. We got home from school. We had been boarded out of our last house. We had yellow tape on the door saying, keep out, no admittance, and we were homeless. The H family spent two years living with neighbors. Finally, Anne's mother threw her father out. Free of his wife and children, Don H moved to New York. The family was shocked when they realized that their church-going father was wildly, flamboyantly gay. It was the 80s, and Don H was embracing the unfettered nightlife and unprotected sex of the time. Sometimes we would be walking arm in arm and he would collapse on the curb, unable to get a breath. He would promise me that nothing was wrong and then he'd disappear for hours at a time. Dad died on March 4th, 1983. He was one of the first cases of AIDS diagnosed in the United States. When you learned that your father had AIDS, did you think I might have AIDS? Absolutely. But I thought I was gonna die. The illusion was no more. The perfect family had collapsed, and Anne would spend the next 20 years in a tortured search. I think everything I've done in all my insanity was trying to get my parents to love me. My father loved movie stars. I decided I needed to become famous to get his love. My mother loved Jesus. That was her thing. So I wanted to become Jesus Christ. I wanted to save the world to get her love. I went to the utmost of extremes. A movie star to get your father to love you, Jesus Christ to get your mother to love you. Absolutely. It was a race. I, I had them neck and neck. I would do anything I possibly could. Just. <sighs> you wrote, not getting love was what drove me crazy. Many people don't get love, but they don't go insane. I think there are different levels of insanity. I did a lot of things in my life to get away from what had happened to me. I drank. I smoked. I did drugs. I had sex with people. I did anything I could to get the shame out of my life. At the same time that all of this is happening, you got a job in a soap opera. You were in another world. There you played twins. Acting was a way for me to express myself. I was able to express sweet, tender, kind, loving emotions as Marley and I was able to be the bad girl 
sexy, mean and nasty Vicky on this. It was everything that I was and everything that I was never allowed to be. I loved that job. But as H's career began to flourish, she began to feel increasingly disconnected. Still haunted by the specter of her past, she turned to therapy. By the time she was 25, her personality had begun to fragment, shattering into moments of madness. You and H think you are Jesus, and you take the name Celestia. Did you really think you were Jesus? I told my mother at about the seventh year of therapy that I had been abused sexually by my father. And she hung up the phone on me. To have gone through so much work to heal myself and have my mother not acknowledge in any way that she was sorry for what had happened to me broke my heart. And in that moment, I think I split off from myself. So Anne, this girl who had just confronted her mother, shrunk, and out came Celestia, where I was literally thrown to the ground, and I am not kidding, in New York City, thrown to the ground and heard the voice of God and thought I was absolutely insane. I had no idea what to do. I was existing as two people. So even though you thought you were Jesus or Celestia, you also at the same time knew this was an aberration. Absolutely. That's the thing about going crazy. You are absolutely aware, at least I was, that I was Anne Hage, an actress, I had friends, there were people who would think I was crazy if I was ever going to talk about this, and at the same time, I'm hearing God talk to me, saying, you are basically from heaven. When 2020 returns... I spoke a different language that God and I spoke. Can you still remember that language you spoke? Achimes, akaporta tu madonna. I was, in my mind, learning it from God. Next. has always been unpredictable. And as we continue, you will hear about her sensational love affair with Ellen DeGeneres and her romance before that with Steve Martin. But first, her secret world in which she became Celestia, endowed with special powers and a direct line to God. How did it manifest itself? What were your powers? What, what did you see in yourself? Wow. Uh, so many different things. What could I do when I was Celestia? I spoke a different language. I spoke a different language that God and I spoke yeah. together. I could, you name it, I could do it. I could see into the future. I could heal people. Can you still remember that language you spoke? Of course. Can you do any of it? Sure. What would you like me to say? I don't know anything. Well, the word for God, okay, a lot of it is prayer. The word for God in my language is called kines. A kines, a kaporta tu madon. It is a good fortune, Isa Don, to be here. And that's a language you never... I don't know where it came from. I don't even know what it means. I was, in my mind, learning it from God. Anne says she was in the grip of voices and visions almost every waking moment for nearly seven years. As she wrestled with those demons, she managed, almost unimaginably, to thrive professionally. By 1995, she had begun to star in major movies. Here you are, this other life. You're acting, you're seeing friends, you're very popular. Yeah, that was an incredible juggle, I have to say. I mean, I would work, I would do normal things. I did wag the dogs, I was meeting the most incredible actors of my life. I couldn't believe where my career was going. And then I would go into my trailer and have to write down messages that I, I believed I was hearing from God about love. You go in your trailer and you're a whole other person. You close the door and you're a whole other person. You're Jesus. I'm Celestia. Well, Celestia.